Hi everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today's topic is hyponatremia. So hyponatremia is a very common electrolyte abnormality. and There is a systematic approach that you can take when you assess and manage a patient with hyponatremia. So first and foremost, it's important to consider whether the hyponatremia result is true. And this is because there are some other serum abnormalities which can give a machine result of low sodium without it being necessarily true, and that's referred to as pseudo-hyponatremia. And the main abnormalities that give rise to this pseudo-hyponatremia are hyperlipidemia, hyperproteinemia, and hyperglycemia. The way that this can be distinguished from true hyponatremia is based on the fact that sodium is one of the main salts within the body, and hence the serum osmolality is heavily dependent on your sodium concentration. So if your serum osmolality is normal with a low sodium, that's suggestive of pseudohyponatremia, and that would occur in cases of high lipids and high proteins. If your serum osmolality is high with a low sodium, that's also suggestive of pseudohyponatremia, but more likely due to hyperglycemia. So the main point is that in true hyponatremia, the serum osmolality should be low. So if you are happy that a patient has a true hyponatremia, the next step involves assessing their fluid status, as, that, as this helps clearly delineate the different causes of hyponatremia. So if the patient appears dehydrated and they're hypovolemic, there's various causes. However, some of the main ones include diarrhea, vomiting, and diuretics. On the other hand, if the patient appears fluid overloaded, the main causes include liver failure, renal failure and heart failure. So in these cases, patients are retaining far more fluid than they should be, and hence the fluid volume within which a certain fixed amount of salt is diluted is larger, and hence you get hyponatremia. These conditions also have various other complex effects on um, various hormones, which also promote hyponatremia. And then in the middle, you have euvolemic hyponatremia, and the causes are generally endocrine. So SIADH, hypothyroidism, and adrenal insufficiency. The treatment of hyponatremia, as with most other things, would depend heavily on making sure we treat the cause. However, initially, we can make sure that things don't get any worse. So in hypovolemia, the patient's circulating fluid volume is depleted, so we should give some IV fluids to help replenish that. However, in euvolemic and hypervolemic hyponatremia, they should be fluid restricted, as you don't want to increase the volume of fluid within which that salt is diluted. So generally speaking, it can be fairly easy to distinguish between hypervolemic hyponatremia and hypovolemic hyponatremia. However, in between, euvolemic and hypervolemic can be a little bit uh, more nebulous. However, there is one useful investigation that can help delineate these causes, and that is urinary sodium. So in normal physiology, if a patient is hypovolemic, they will increase their sodium reabsorption within the kidneys because that will be followed by an increase in water retention and hence your circulating fluid volume gets replenished. But that means that your urine sodium is low. So that is a normal physiological response. And the clinical implications of this is that if the urine sodium is low, so less than 20 millimoles is the figure that's usually used, that's suggestive of hypervolemia. It suggests that your body is trying to retain more salt in order to replenish the circulating fluid volume. The only caveat is that diuretics would of course cause hypervolemia, however they work by targeting the kidneys and increasing salt excretion, so that would not cause a low urine sodium. If urine sodium is high, so above 20 millimoles per litre, that's suggestive of, as we mentioned, diuretic use or euvolemic causes of hyponatremia.